My name is Kate Wilder. I've got a master's in criminal psychology. I'm an investigative journalist and hope to make a difference. Hey, we're here with Jesse Buckley to talk about Supermassive's brand new game in the Dark Pictures anthology, The Devil in Me. So let's start at the beginning. Tell us a bit about the character that you play. I play a character called Kate Wilder, who is a presenter um, who's part of this documentary team who are doing a show about the serial killer H.H. H. Holmes. America's first serial killer confessed to 27 murders. The number grew significantly, nearly 200 lives. I'm a serial serial killer documentary <laughs> watcher. Is that is that your jam too? Yeah, yeah, I'll watch a serial killer documentary. Right, it's really <laughs> relaxing. Like, okay, cool, yeah, I can chill out. Yeah, it's kind of fascinating why we're all addicted to kind of those stories. We need a plan. Forget his games, traps, all that bullshit. Think about the killers we've covered. There's always a weakness. I'm not playing detective, I just want to survive. Playing detective is how we survive. So what interested you in the, in the role of Kate? Well, to be honest, I've never played a video game in my life, and I had no idea what the hell the world was. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so that was firstly why I kind of was like, oh yeah, that sounds new <laughs> and fun. And yeah, and then I read the script and talked to Alita, who's our director, and it just seemed like a really lovely thing to be part of and something new and fun. And I can't believe how they create this world. <laughs> and action. You know, usually I just get a script and it's like 70 to 100 pages long, but there's like 300 pages in one script. It's unbelievable. This is, this is. So as you kind of mentioned, the game has multiple branching paths, so your character could end up in any number of, uh, of situations. What's it like to film a scene, you know, multiple times with, with different endings? What I've found is like, you can only be in whatever strand you're in at that time and figure out the emotion of it at that moment because then you can offer up something completely different when you go into a different strand. And it's a very like immediate experience, which I guess is also what a player will feel when they're doing it as well. So I just kind of try and keep my head in where we are right there at that moment. And if I was trying to think of what was happening in the other strand, it would be a disaster. <laughs> it must be really hard, yeah, because you kind of have this mapping, I suppose, in, in your brain of what, you know, what the outcomes could be, and then just trying to stay in that moment. It's very interesting stuff. So many things can happen to, to characters in, in the Dark Pictures anthologies. How do you make sure that Kate is always Kate, no matter what she's kind of faced with? Ah. Uh... Well, I guess before we started, we did a big read through with everybody. So it was good to kind of get a handle on who she is in the context of the environment she's in, but also the relationships that are in the world as well. It just kind of reveals itself from the script and I just kind of let her run, run, yeah. run free and see what That's so cool, <laughs> happens though. to her. Yeah, I don't think anybody has continuity in themselves. I don't anyway. It must be very <laughs> difficult. Yeah, really difficult. And that's it. I guess it's it's quite good fun to then go, OK, let's go. Let's go yeah, with this yeah. and see where we end well, up. Well, I think also Kate lives on the knife edge of she has a genuine obsession and curiosity about serial killers. So there's part of her that's kind of running towards it and part of her that's running away from it, you know? Mm -hmm. And all of them have come to be curious about H.H. H. Holmes. But also with that, you're kind of living a real life horror as you're going into this world. So, come on, Charlie. What do we know about this guy? And everybody's fantastic, like, and they're all such distinctive people, you know? And they all somehow genuinely feel like a crew, you know, nice. like yeah. you're going to have the kind of riffs. Charlie is thinking. She looks a lot like a temper tantrum. And the new that. fledgling loves and then the kind of creeping horror of your life. <laughs> what are you doing with your life? Sounds you know, familiar. <laughs> yeah, I think I've been there at 3 a.m. Um, <laughs> what is all of this? OK, so let's talk about the setting that Kate finds herself in. I've heard something about murder castles. I'd like to know more. <laughs> um, so the production company that Kate works for, Lonnet Entertainment, they get a mysterious call from a stranger <laughs> who says that he's basically made a replica of H.H. H. Holmes' murder castle. Wicked. And invites them to come and document it because he knows that they're interested in serial killers. And Lonnet Entertainment, which is run by a character called Charlie, is kind of hard up 
but only Charlie knows that. And so even though Kate is a bit kind of uh, resistant to go because it just feels like another kind of fuddy-duddy thing, they agree to go to this island as one last kind of hurrah. <laughs> it sounds like absolutely nothing awful is going to happen. It sounds no. like a perfect setup. I think I'll have a cup of tea. Delightful. <laughs> yeah, lovely island. Very nice. Look. Years are the wine that fill the cup of time. So in the game, you've got quite a limited inventory. Which items would you take into the house if you could take anything? Hmm. I'd I'd probably take like I think look all these mad people are just in need of a hug. <laughs> so I'd probably take a bottle of wine and just be like, mate, let's just sit down, have a glass of wine, talk about what's what's going on Get here. Get Charlie's fags. Come here. Have let's a fag. Just let's down. just calm down. <laughs> that's probably that's my weapon of shame. I'd kill him with kindness. Well, you could <laughs> at least start with the wine, and if that doesn't work, you've got the bottle. So I exactly. mean, it's, a, it's yeah, perfect. You're done. You're done. And if not, I could just drink it myself and have a lovely time. Some kind of belt with three or four of them attached. Off you go. It's all going to be fine. And if it's not fine, you're not going to know about it. Yeah. Done. Perfect. Good choice. I think it's okay if we pour some wine. God, please do. So you've mentioned the chase scene with the uh, with the other girls. Was that fun? <laughs> that genuinely oh was God. fun to be running and scared and 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 all of that. Yeah, it's always okay. it's always fun. I mean, I think everything's kind of fun. <laughs> so um, thank God it's not something that happens regularly in your real life. So when mm -hmm. you get to be part of something where it's super heightened and surprising and otherworldly things can happen and you've got these two excellent kind of birds beside you who are like fighting off the demons and you're genuinely scared and you're kind of doing it together it's um yeah it's brilliant move your ass go i've been around mocap i've seen mocap it fascinates me what what was that like and more so what's it going to be like to see your face in a video game to wear a mocap is like, I mean, you just feel like you've got a huge nose because you've got this cycling helmet on, but then it has a huge beak at the end <laughs> where there's a camera. And sometimes when they're putting it on, you can see the other actors already kind of lined up and it's very close. It's very scary. No, you're gonna kill me. But yeah, I think it'd be super interesting. I don't know, maybe I'll look a bit better. They'll dock to me off or something. <laughs> <laughs> Kate's just a better version of me. Yeah, it'll be really interesting. It's going to be very cool. As far as, let's say, traditional acting versus video game acting, what were the, the differences? Was there a huge kind of difference between the two? I'd say the main difference is just the speed at which you work when you're making a video game. You still have the same intention and narratively it's the same kind of experience because you're creating characters together and you're creating a world together and our wonderful director is like interacting with us as a film director would. And also you're on a stage where there's little square boxes and there isn't a costume, you know, that's something that's added later. And all that's being caught is the emotions on your face. It must be quite intense. And when it's just focusing on your face, that must be a real like, I don't know, uh, like intense yeah. experience. Although to be honest, like the scripts are, they're really good and so I, I don't really try and think about that too much whatever the situation I think if I did think about it it would be an, an awful disaster yeah it may, <laughs> may change the situation so, entirely um, you just kind of listen and listen to everybody else that's there and uh, and get on with it we need a plan forget his games traps all that bullshit Think about the killers we've covered. There's always a weakness. Are you suggesting we invite him to tea and psychoanalyze? I'm suggesting we use our heads. We play his games, we'll lose. It's our best shot. 